Okay, in this video, we are going to look at a past year question from Winter 15, Paper 4.3. Uh, let's read the question together. We have two bodies in thermal equilibrium. So the first part to warm up, state what is meant by thermal equilibrium. You see that this one is two marks, so it should have two points. No? So objects in thermal equilibrium will have the same temperature. Okay, so if you have two objects, they are in thermal contact or they are touching each other and they have the same temperature, we can deduce that they are in thermal equilibrium. Okay, and the second point here is that objects in thermal equilibrium have no net transfer of heat or thermal energy between the bodies. So it's like, let's say you have two blocks, <coughs> block A and block B, and they are at slightly different temperatures. So let's say this is 70 degrees Celsius, maybe this is 30 degrees Celsius. So the heat flow from A to B will be much bigger than the heat flow from B to A. Doesn't mean that there's no heat flow because this heat flow is vibration of particles. So as long as they're touching, they will vibrate each other. Just that B will vibrate the particles in A to a lesser extent because the temperature tells us the internal energy or the kinetic energy of the particles. So part, partly it's due to the vibration as well. So once they achieve thermal equilibrium, what will happen here is your uh, block A, and I don't know what the final temperature is. We need more information. But we definitely know that the equilibrium temperature will be between 70 and 30. So I don't know, let's say 50. So this is the first point. They have the same temperature. Okay. And the second point here is that doesn't mean there's no heat flow. It just means that the net heat flow is zero. Okay, so there's no net transfer of thermal energy. All right, so let's look at B. The temperature of a body is found to increase from 15 degrees Celsius, 15.9 degrees Celsius to 57.2 degrees Celsius, determined in Kelvin to appropriate number of decimal places, the rise in temperature of the body, and the final temperature of the body. So I want you to recall from your previous chapter that when, talk, when we talk about temperature scales, right, if we are converting degrees Celsius to Kelvin, normally for ideal gases, we add 273 and call it a day. Lah. But you look at this one, the actual value is 273.15. So if the given reading, let's say for example, this thermometer measures to um, 1 dp, this means that this value, I should also take 1 dp. Huh? So if it's 1 dp, then I can say that the rise in temperature, I think I'll just convert both of these lah into Kelvin. So I think the rise in temperature, it doesn't matter whether it's Kelvin or degrees Celsius. Because you add 273.2 here, you add 273.2 here, then there's no much difference, right? You add both sides and then you minus. So, okay lah, I add for you lah, in case you don't know what I'm talking about. So 257.2, to convert this, you will add 273.2. Again, just to remind you, one decimal point, one decimal point. So you want to find the change. I will take the final temperature, which is 57.2 degrees Celsius, minus the initial temperature, 15.9 degrees Celsius, converting to Kelvin. You can see how this one, this uh, 273.2 minus 273.2 different, no more already law. So it's perfectly fine to take the temperature difference as degree Celsius because one degree Celsius change is equal to one Kelvin change. So I'm going to write out the answer here. This one will give us a uh, 41.3 Okay. Okay. So I think maybe this is a important point to find that degree Celsius convert to Kelvin. You add two seven three point one five if it's two decimal point point two if it's one decimal point two seven three if there's no decimal point. Also, the change delta T of one degree Celsius is equal to delta T of one Kelvin.
okay the magnitude of change it's a bit like we didn't change the size of the scale because normally when you convert unit let's say you convert from meter to cm you change the size of the scale one cm is smaller than one meter but right now we are not changing the size of the scale we just move the origin all right that's why when it comes to changes you don't have to convert but here if you want the final temperature which is 57.2 degrees celsius we will add 273.2 and this will give us 330.4 Kelvin. Okay, so that's part B about temperature scales. We're going to move on to part C now. Alright, let's look at part C. Here we have an ideal gas at constant pressure. Okay, let's highlight the important information. Okay, pressure is constant. And is heated from a temperature of 290 Kelvin to a final temperature of 350 Kelvin. The change in volume of the gas is 950 cm cube. Okay, so I'm just going to label all of this. This is P, constant. This is the temperature, so final and initial. No, wait, this is final. This is initial. And also at the same time, there's a change in volume. So I'll write this one as delta V. So the total change in kinetic energy, delta EK, measured in joules of the gas molecule is given by, by this expression. Oh, very nice. They give you this. 3 over 2 kT. I don't know what this 1.9 is. Nah. Okay, you can go and find out what that 1.9 is. But they give us we use. Where delta T is a change in temperature in Kelvin. Determine the thermal energy required. So this is what we want to find. Thermal energy required to produce the change in temperature from 290 Kelvin to 350 Kelvin. So basically what we are saying is that we have a sample of gas. Okay. And because we allow the temperature to be the same, Sorry, we allow the pressure to be constant. This means that when you heat, because thermal energy required, so when we add heat plus Q to the gas, uh, the gas particle will move faster. To have the same rate of collision, I need the piston to expand. So this piston will expand, maybe until here. Okay, so this is the new piston position. And we know that the delta V is 950 cm cube. So you add heat to the gas, the gas expands. Alright, at the same time, temperature increase as well. So when temperature increase, inside here, temperature increase, this means the internal energy will also increase. So the heat added got two effects. I'm just going to write it down in a sentence for you. By conservation of energy, the thermal energy added will be equal to the increase in internal energy plus the work done by the gas because the gas is going to expand. You add heat into the gas, the gas takes that heat, particles travel faster, temperature increase, gas expands, uh, volume increase, pressure the same. Okay, Because the only way for pressure to maintain the same is to allow the faster moving air particles more space to travel. So from here, because the gas is ideal, so for ideal gas, your delta U is equal to delta EK. Alright, delta U is equal to delta EK because there's no intermolecular forces. So from here, I will get Q is equal to change in EK plus work done by gas. What is work done by gas again? P delta V. We can use this equation because, so I'll write here, work done will be equal to P delta V because we have constant pressure. All right, so this is all side note. I'm writing this so that as a side note for, for us to know. So we know the change in kinetic energy, 3 over 2 times 1.9 times change in temperature, which is 350 minus 290. Okay? And 
the pr constant pressure is 1.2 times 10 to the power of 5. The change in volume is 950. Cm cubed needs to be converted to meter cube to maintain the SI unit joules. So 950 times 10 to the power of negative 2 power 3, that would be negative 6. Alright, so you can press your calculator. This will be 171 joule. And this one would be 114 joule. So basically, the total heat needed for this operation, such that the internal energy increases by 171 for the ideal gas, and the work done is 114. The total energy would be 285 joule. Okay? So the sign convention here is pretty straightforward because you add heat, ma, so this is positive law. Temperature increase, ma, this is positive law. Internal energy is positive. Okay, temperature increase. And your work done is by the gas. The gas is expanding. Okay, so that's all. I will see you in the next example. Okay, but before I go, there might be some people who are a bit concerned about this example because you might be looking at this equation and you might be thinking to yourself, Miss, uh, this equation of yours, uh, although it makes sense because it's conservation of energy, heat added increases the kinetic energy of the particle and causes the gas to expand, but this was not the first law of thermodynamics that was taught in the lecture. If that's what you're thinking, you're right. So let me adjust the working a bit to show you how it would look like if, let's say, we are looking, we are applying that uh, first law of thermodynamics that was given inside your lecture. So, or from first law, change in internal energy is equal to um, heat added plus W. Okay, so from here, we know the change in internal energy is the change in EK. And this will be heat added plus W. So I'm going to fast forward a bit because I actually know the change in EK. I've calculated this as 171. We are looking for the heat added and your W will be negative 114. Okay. Of course, you still need to do the granular calculation of getting 171 and 114. But here, uh, once you get this, you can find that your Q is equal to 285 Joule. The reason why there is a negative sign here is because of the sign convention uh, that is given when applying new the thermal first law of thermodynamic in this pattern. So negative here shows volume increase. Mm. Okay, so that's why sometimes when using this one, it's a little bit counterintuitive. Uh, and in this kind of question, since they didn't explicitly ask you to state first law, it's perfectly fine to. Uh, Look for 171, 114 separately and add them together. Okay, so in fact, um, if I were to show you the mark scheme, the mark scheme looks like this. Okay, so you can see from here, the change in kinetic energy, you calculate this 171 with the correct substitution is one mark. So this one is one mark. I'm just going to tick here. One mark. Okay. I mean, including the calculation. Uh. This 141 is also one mark. And then you add together, you get one mark. Okay. So you can calculate them separately and then just decide whether you want to use this or you want to use this. So if you want to like, stick to the first law of thermodynamics as taught in the syllabus, then your working will look like this. Uh. Alright, so that's all for this example. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.